10 p.m. BULOVA Bulova Watch Time. For supreme accuracy, expert design, and outstanding value, choose a Bulova. Watch of a lifetime. WEAF New York. Rinso, R-I-N-S-O, Soapy Rich Rinso presents Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. Check your hats and coats. May I have my coat, miss? Uh, here's the check. Thank you. Number 503? Yes, a camel's hair coat. Oh, yes, I remember. It's right over here. Here you are, sir. Help you on with it? No, thanks. I'll carry it. Here you are, miss. Thank you, sir. Check here, please. Check your hats and coats. Oh, taxi! Taxi! What's your hurry, Blackie? Oh, <laughs> well, Faraday, my favorite cop. Don't be so happy to see me, Blackie. You're going with me. Oh, goody. <laughs> what are we celebrating tonight? Your birthday? No celebration for you, Blackie. I want you for the murder of Andrew Lawrence. Oh, you do, do you? Who's he? You know. The caretaker of the Devon Estate. Now, look, Inspector, I don't know any caretakers, and I never even heard of the Devon Estate. I, I, I know, Blackie. What about those stains on that coat you're carrying there? They look like blood. Stains? Yeah, stains. Hey, wait a minute. This isn't my coat. Oh, let me see. Well, now, what's this on the label? It says here, Boston Blackie. Yes, that's my label, all right, but this isn't my coat. Oh, uh-huh. I suppose somebody sewed that label in another coat. Well, that's not bad for you, Inspector. Oh. Could be. Well, all I know is you're going down to headquarters and the coat is going to the lab. And I hope those stains prove to be blood. Well, I hope you don't get your hope. <laughs> Once again, Boston Blackie and Inspector Faraday have tangled. Boston Blackie, enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friend. Is there anything prettier these hot summer days than a nice-looking girl in a crisp, bright-colored cotton dress? Well, to us men, those dresses always look fresh and cool as peppermint ice cream. And it's almost as easy as snapping your fingers to keep those pretty printed washables bright and gay with Rinso helping out. Yes, indeed, those hard-working Rinso suds make dirt disappear in a jiffy, whether you're using a tub or a washing machine. Rinso's mighty easy on your pretty washable colors, too. They stay fresh and bright even after dozens of washings. So take a tip from Bob White for easier wash days and brighter, cleaner clothes. That's Rinso White and Rinso Bright for your colored clothes. If you value them... Better use Rinso every time you wash them. And now, back to Chester Morris as Boston Blackie, who is in Inspector Faraday's office, waiting word on the laboratory tests of the blood stains found on the coat he was wearing. Blackie, for a smart guy, you get into more scrapes. Uh, look, Inspector, can't you think without pacing the floor? Uh... I've got a little proposition to make you. Oh, but how about the blood stains on the coat, Inspector? Remember, you wanted me for murder. Well, now, just in case those blood stains turn out not to be blood stains. Oh, you don't need to apologize, Inspector. Who's apologizing? <laughs> uh, what are you laughing at? Well, your shoelaces are untied. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tie them? Me? Yes. <laughs> now, wait a minute. This is going to be fun. Yes. All right, you tie them, Blackie. What? Now, really, Inspector, yes, this you. is quite humiliating. I, I never fancied myself as a gentleman's gentleman. Gentleman's gentleman? Cut out the double talk and come on, tie my shoelaces, Maggie. Oh, oh, well, all right. <laughs> you know, I'm enjoying this. Boston Blackie, finally on his knees. Yes, but not begging, Inspector. <laughs> By the way, don't you ever get your shoes shined? What for? Oh, well, there you are. <laughs> I hope you realize it's a privilege to be tied by Boston Black. Wonderful. Here's the report, Inspector. Okay, let's have it. That'll be all, Matthews. All right, Inspector. Goodbye, Matthews. You ain't going anywhere, Blackie. What? <laughs> well, come on, Inspector. What's the verdict? I'll read it to you, Blackie. It says, quote, Stains taken from the coat of Boston Blackie analyzed. Yes. Tests show them to be human blood matching that of Andrew Lawrence, murdered caretaker of Devon Estate, signed Murphy Police Laboratory, unquote. Well, that's it, Blackie. I'm locking you up right now. Oh. And I'm not taking any chances on you getting out of here first. 
Hold out your hands. Oh, now, Inspector Cuffs, for me? Yeah. Oh, you've got a very bad memory. Okay, maybe you can get out of handcuffs, but my gun doesn't miss. What, a gun again, Inspector? Again. Say, so look, why don't you try a bow and arrow for a change? All right, let's get going. And just to make sure, I'm going to escort you personally to your cell. That'll be nice. All right, down the hall, and don't try anything funny. Well, will you sit with me a while and hold my hand? Oh, come on. Oh, I'm sorry I had to tie your shoelaces together, Faraday. And thanks for the gun. <laughs> you know, you look very funny. Generally, you're only flat on your feet. But now you're flat on your face. Got the answer yet, Blanky? Not yet, Shorty. Hello? Oh, oh, hello. Savoy Cafe? Yes. This is the manager speaking. Well, my name is Jones. Yes? My niece works in your check room. I just arrived in town, and I'd like to talk to her, please. You mean Marion Macy? Yes. Well, she's not here. I'm sorry. She's gone home. Had a headache, she said. Left here about an hour ago. Oh, she did. Too bad. Uh, by the way, could you give me her address? Why, yes. The Lincoln Apartments. The Lincoln, huh? Well, thank you very much. Goodbye. You know, I still can't figure out, Blackie, why that hat check girl would take the label out of your coat and then sew it in another one. Well, she was probably following orders. That's what we're going to find out. Uh, we're going to leave this hot out party? Yes. We're going to the Lincoln Apartments. Here's the apartment, Shorty. That's funny. Probably asleep. But I've got to talk to her. Can you, can you open that door, boss? Are you kidding? I've got it, Shorty. There it is. Come on. I'm getting a creepy feeling, boss, like I always do. Oh, before. Shorty, will you relax? Hey, hey what's this? What? Holy mackerel, the dame. Boss, that feeling of mine was right. Yes, it's the check room girl, girl all right, Shorty. She's dead. Come on over here and take a look. Oh, no, no, no. I'll take your word for it. Poor kid. Stabbed to death. Somebody's playing for keeps, Shorty. Somebody wanted to make sure I didn't find out who told her to switch coats. If Faraday walks in now, he'll try to pin us on you, sure. Come on, we better get out of here. Come on, boy. Yeah, that's Let's... right. There's nothing around here will help us. Shorty. Yeah? That caretaker was murdered out at the Devon Estate. Yeah. So that's where I'm going. <laughs> I beg your pardon, miss. I, I didn't see you. What I was... are you doing here on my grounds? Well, this is the Devon Estate, isn't it? Yes, and you're trespassing. Well, I hope that means looking for a job, because that's what I'm doing. It doesn't. And even if it did, it wouldn't matter. There's no job open here. Well, you know, I'm a pretty handy fellow. I can do a lot of things. I'm I... really not interested. There's a policeman on the grounds. If you don't leave immediately, I'll call him and have you thrown off. Oh, please don't do that. I understood there was a job open here, a, a caretaker's job. Your caretaker was... Uh... Was murdered. Yes, he was. Now, please leave. I already have a new caretaker. Jerry? Uh, yes, Miss Morrison. <laughs> coming. Miss Morrison, huh? Awful pretty name. Over here, Jerry. Will you go now, please, Mr... Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Morrison. My name is Jones. John J. Jones. I'm a detective. Oh, please don't give me away. Oh, here I am, Miss Morrison. Oh, I, uh... I, I don't need you, Jerry. I, I just wanted to know you were around. Oh, okay, ma'am. If you want me, just sing out. Well... <laughs> Where did you get him? I hired him a little while ago. So you're a detective, Mr. Jones. Have you credentials? Well, uh, you see, I never carry them when I'm on a case. Things can happen, you know. That's what I'm afraid of. Oh, Miss Morrison, please believe me. Well, I believe you, but I'll never know why. <laughs> Thanks. The house is up this way. What can I tell you that might help you, Mr. Jones? Well, uh, for one thing, I'm puzzled. Now, your name is Morrison, and this is the Devon Estate. Well, I bought it six months ago. Oh. It was formerly owned by a man named John Devon. And when he died, this place was sold for taxes. I see. Well, why are you still living here, Miss Morrison? I mean, aren't you a little frightened after what happened? Yes. Yes, I am a little. But where could I go? Besides, I'm anxious to know the answer to a lot of things. For instance? Well, right after I bought this estate... Strange things began to happen. One morning, the chimney was torn apart. A few days later, I found the cellar ransacked. Then one night, the whole living room was turned upside down. I see. Well, where was your old caretaker during all this? 
He was down the road, sleeping in his own cottage. Oh. But after the living room was ransacked, he slept in the house on a couch. That is, until last night. Or rather, early this morning, when we found him murdered. Here we are. Oh. Please come in. Thank you. You're pretty calm about all this, Miss Morrison. It, uh, it must be rather annoying. It's more than annoying. My nerves are beginning to jump. Yes, I'm sure. Anything else you can tell me that might help? Well, possibly. I've had two offers to sell recently. The agent who negotiated the sale of this house made me an offer the day before yesterday to buy it back. Oh, and what's the agent's name? Arthur Moran. I see. Go on. Well, when I refused, he said his client, in any case, would like to buy the gun collection that was here when I took possession. Oh. Well, are you interested in guns? Yes, and it's a wonderful collection. It came with the house. Well, it's obvious somebody is looking for something in this house. When he couldn't find it, he wanted to buy the house. When he couldn't do that, he wanted to buy your gun collection. And, of course, he was looking for... The gun collection. I'll bet your caretaker surprised him while he was searching for it. Uh, how long had the caretaker been here? A long time. I sort of inherited him with the place. I see. You mentioned there was a policeman on the grounds. Where is he? Well, he's around somewhere. He's staying with Jerry in the caretaker's cottage. Uh, Miss Morrison, could you arrange for the policeman and your new caretaker to sleep downstairs here and for me to take over the cottage for the night? Certainly, I can do that. Oh, fine. And can you reach me in a hurry if you need me? Yes. There's an extension phone between here and the caretaker's place. Good. I'll call Jerry and tell him he's sleeping down here tonight. Thanks. Oh, uh, Miss Morrison, uh, what do your best friends call you? <laughs> Polly. Good night, Polly. <laughs> you see, I'm one of your best friends. <laughs> morning. Uh, hey, what's this? Hey, wait, Jerry. Jerry, I'll have you untied in a minute. Oh, even my Aunt Hattie couldn't talk with that gag on. I better take it off. There. There. Now, what happened? I I don't know. I I went to sleep last night on the couch here, and, and during the night, somebody tapped me on the bean. And when I woke up a little while ago, I was I was tied up and, and gagged. Yeah. Oh, they, you're not tied up anymore. Now, where's the cop that was with you? I don't know. Uh-oh. There he is, over in the corner. He's tied up, too. Get him loose, Jerry. Oh, take a look at this place. It's a mess. Everything's turned upside down. Well, never mind that. I want to find out about Miss Morrison. Polly. Polly. <sighs> Polly. Polly, what's happened? <sighs> Wake up, Polly. Wake up. What? Get up. Come on now. Up. That's a girl. Come on now. Now walk around the room with me. Here. Yeah. Put your arm on my shoulder. That's right. Now tell me what happened. Well, I don't know. You've been drugged, Polly. Now come on, try and think. I don't know. I'm tired. I want to lie down again. Now look, Polly, you've got to keep walking. Come on. We'll go downstairs and then you'll feel better in a minute. Hey! Hey, you upstairs. Yes, what is it? Miss Morrison okay? Yes, how's the policeman? Oh, he's hurt pretty bad. I'm taking him to the doctor's down the road. Okay, Jerry. I'll see you when you get back. Now, Polly, come on. Walk. Come on now, down the stairs. That's right. I... I'm beginning to remember now. Good. I put a glass of milk on my night table. And then I went downstairs for a book. When I came back, I drank the milk... And then I got terribly drowsy. Mm. Well, that explains the drug. But you're getting over it all right. What's happened down here? Well, the whole place is turned inside out. Well, I don't know what happened yet. I can't stand this any longer. I can't. Oh, now, Polly, take it easy, please. Here, sit down for a minute. Come on. There, that's better. Well, now, isn't that a pretty picture? Well, Inspector Faraday. Yes, Inspector Faraday. So I caught up with you again, eh, Blackie? Blackie? Certainly, Miss Morrison. Boston Blackie. You've heard of him. But he said his name was Jones, oh. that he was a detective. I can tell you why, Polly, if you'll only give me a chance. Not a I... chance, Blackie. I figured you'd come up here after we found the hat check girl murdered. Yeah. You've got a killing complex lately. Faraday, will you take it easy? I'm really getting close to the murderer. Yeah, me too. I'm practically standing in front of him. Let your gun drop on the floor, Faraday. Drop it. Hey, who are you? Let the gun go or I'll let a bullet go, copper. Come on. Uh, that's being smart. 
Hey, Danny, get Blackie's rod. Step on it. Okay, Eddie. All right, what is all this fuss about Blackie? Hero stuff? You're going to knock out these two guys and show off for the gal here? Well, I'd like to, Faraday. Only a bullet moves faster than I can. <laughs> hey, you mugs. I don't mean to be inquisitive, but uh, what's all this about? You'll know soon enough. How about it, Danny? I got Blackie's rod and the inspectors. Okay. Put the straight jackets on him, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I didn't think we'd get the inspector, too. You better go call the boss. Yeah, he said to follow orders to the letter. Where's the phone, lady? Well, I... Yeah, you better tell him, Polly. Well, it, it's just outside the door. Thanks, lady. Keep them all under the gun muzzle, Danny. Okay. Watch that blackie especially. Yeah. I'll be right back. And watch that blackie especially. What is the guy, a gunman or a press agent? <laughs> what a build-up he's giving you, blackie. Well, after all, I haven't established a reputation for nothing. <laughs> Even you appreciate me sometimes, uh, Faraday. Uh... Okay, Danny. I talked to the boss. Stick the straight jackets on him. What size straight jacket you take, Blackie? I always have my straight jackets made to order. Yeah. After we get through searching the house, we'll stick their feet in concrete and toss them in the river. Feet in concrete? Now, you wouldn't dare to do that. Oh, don't yeah. worry, Faraday. At least we won't get our feet wet. Very funny, Blackie. Very funny. <laughs> Don't do it the hard way, ladies. Take it easy. What am I talking about? Why, dishwashing, of course. And the way to take it easy is to let Soapy Rich Rinso take over. Because those lively, hard-working Rinso suds get right after every little bit of clinging grease and all those sticky food particles and chase them away quick as a wink. Just try it. And by all means, have Rinso handy for wash day. This hot weather, you certainly don't want to knock yourself out doing your wash the hard way either. Well, remember... Rinso not only makes wash day a cinch, it helps you turn out a wash you're really proud of. I'll bet you'll be singing your way through wash day like this. Rinso, right? Rinso, right? Happy little wash day song. Rinso, right? Rinso, right? Beauty sing it all day long. Your fine feather fan has a message to send, so listen, you can't go wrong. Rinso, right? Rinso, right? Happy little wash day song. So get Rinso tomorrow. And now, back to Chester Morris as Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie, Polly Morrison, and Inspector Faraday have been put in straitjackets by two thugs after Blackie has been accused of the murder of the caretaker of the Devon estate. One of the gunmen is on guard while the other is searching the Devon house. What are you twisting around for, Blackie? <laughs> Straight jackets were made to hold people. Yes, handy little things, aren't they? Yeah. Now, here you can get out of ropes and handcuffs and things. Oh. Yeah, well, why don't you try to get out of that canvas coat you're wearing? <laughs> you're due to get a bath, you know. <laughs> All three of you. That's the boss's orders. Well, that's charming. Uh, by the way, Danny, who is the boss? What's his name? Uh, didn't he give you his card? No. Well, I guess he must have forgot. Huh? <laughs> Gee, you look funny down there lying on the floor. You know, if I felt like it, I could step all over you. How'd you like to have your face stepped on, Blackie? Like this. Hey, let go of my feet. I don't want to step on anybody, Stooge. Hey, this will make sure you stay on the floor till I leave. Well, how in the world did you get out of that straitjacket, Blackie? Never mind that. Get us out of out of ours. How did you get out, Blackie? Well, it's simple. I had my pocket knife in my hand, and while they were putting this jacket on me, I... Well, I just sliced right through the canvas. Hey, hurry up, Blackie. That other guy will be back in a minute. I'll let you out, Inspector, if you'll give me a ten-minute start after I do. What for? Well, I think I can find the man responsible for the two murders, but I've got to have time to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I want ten minutes, Faraday. Come on, what about it? Ten minutes? Okay, you've got it. Thanks. Polly? Yes, Blackie? Uh, tell me, what was the agent's name again? You know, the one who sold you the house and later wanted to buy your gun collection for a client. Arthur Moran. Why? Arthur Moran, huh? Okay. He's due for a phone call. Hello? Mr. Moran? Yes? This is John J. Jones. I'm working with the police department, and I'd like some information. Yes? Uh, who instructed you to try to buy the Devon estate back, and who wanted to get the gun collection? A client of mine in South America. I see. Well, what's his name? Parker Adams. Why, uh, what's this all about? Oh, just checking, Mr. Moran. Who is Adams? Well, uh, he was involved in a scrape here five years ago and went to South America to live. Well, why did he want to buy the Devon estate and the gun collection? Well, I haven't the slightest idea. 
All I know is that he sent a check every week to Mr. Devon from Brazil. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I believe he owned a coffee plantation or something. Well, thank you, Mr. Moran. That's all I wanted to know. Did, uh, did you get all that dope I wanted, Shorty? Yeah, yeah, sure, boss. It was a cinch. Look, I go into the files at the Daily Globe, and I pulled out this stuff about this uh, Parker Adams. Huh, no trouble at all. And say, no wonder this guy Adams had to go to South America. Just put your peepers on this clipping, will you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Come on, Shorty. We're going up to the Devon Estate. here in the bushes. Is the coast clear? Well, th there, there are two policemen in the house and one outside. Okay. Polly, I think I found out something. I know who the murderer is and I know why he's ransacking your house. But Blackie, how did you find that out? Well, I checked the newspaper files on a man named Parker Adams who asked Moran to buy this house from you and then wanted to buy your gun collection. He's in South America now, but he was a suspect in a murder case five years ago. But... What has that to do with what's happened at my house? Well, you see, this Adams wasn't convicted because the police couldn't prove him guilty. They couldn't find the gun. And you think the gun is in my house? Yes. And the Devon was blackmailing Adams with it. Polly, I've got to get by those two policemen and get into the house and find that gun. But, Blackie, how? Oh, well, let's see. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll climb that tree by your window and then drop to the first floor roof. Yes, I know, but the policemen outside... Yeah, I know. I'll throw a rock in the pool. That'll keep him busy while I get in the house. Uh, where is the gun collection, Polly? In the library. Fine. I'll meet you there. Blackie, be careful. Oh, sure. Well, here goes. Is that you, Blackie? Yes, Polly. Oh, I'm so glad. Where's the library? Over here. The gun collection's in this room. Come in, Blackie. Good. Now, we've got to work fast. Now, where are they? In a box in this desk. I'll show them to you. There's a drawer here, but you'd never find it unless you knew it was there. Here they are. Take a look at them. Ooh. Say, this is a fine collection, Polly. All old-timers, too. You know, I was pretty sure that one of them was the gun that Parker Adams killed a man with five years ago. But I can see now that I was wrong. But you said you knew who the murderer was. Oh, Blackie. sure I do. And I know why he did it, but I can't prove it. Well, I'm just a dummy. I'm... Dummy. Hey, wait a minute. That gives me an idea. Look at this. This isn't a real gun at all. What? No. No, it's a dummy. It's hollow. Oh, and look what's inside. A Colt 25 pistol. Why, this must be the one Parker Adams used. And we can easily prove that by the serial number on it. Polly? Polly, I think this is our ace in the hole. You don't mind if I trump that ace, do you, Blackie? I'll take that gun. Jerry! I'm not surprised, Polly. I had a pretty good idea it was this fellow who was in back of these murders. No, you did, eh? Smart guy, huh? How did you know? Well, when one of your thugs went to call the boss before he put us in straitjackets, he, uh, he just casually picked up the telephone and didn't bother to dial. Hmm. There's a direct connection between the house and the caretaker's cottage, and that's where you were, Jerry. You were the boss. You only took this job so you could search for this gun. Hmm, nice figuring, pal. Well, as long as compliments are being handed out, that was pretty clever of you to get yourself tied up here this morning. But not clever enough. Huh. Why, any good boy scout could tell you tied yourself up, Mr. Parker Adams. Adams? Yes. Hmm. He went down to South America and planted somebody to take his phone calls and pretend to be him. It was simple, but effective. Listen, I've spent a lot of time and money trying to get that gun back, Blackie. Yes, and killed two people trying. And now it's going to be four. And, Miss Morrison, don't keep looking over my shoulder for your cops. My boys have taken care of them. Okay, Blackie, give me the gun. Now, just a minute. Uh, let me get this straight. Uh, the caretaker recognized you when you were ransacking the house, and you had to kill it, right? Well? And you had to get rid of the blood-stained camel's hair coat you were wearing. And then after you had the hat check girl switch coats and sew in my own label, you had to kill her to keep her mouth shut. Oh, she didn't pick your coat on purpose. 
It could have been any camel's hair coat. Oh, well, I know the rest. Devin was blackmailing you because he had this gun. When you found out he died, you tried to buy this house, but Miss Morrison got it first. So you came to the States and began operations to get the only evidence that could convict you of murder. Oh, you've said enough. You're stalling. Hey, Eddie. Eddie! Yeah, boss. Oh, you got these two, huh? Get the gun Blackie's got in his hand, Eddie. It's not loaded. Okay, boss. Come on, Blackie, give. Sure. Here. Oh. Holly, hey. she's fainting, boss. Catch her. Hey, stand up. Stop leaning on him, will you? Get off of me, will you? I'll get her, boss. <clears throat> Go to sleep, Eddie. Hey, let go of my hand, will I'm you? holding Gary's gun hand, Blackie. Hurry. You can let go now. Oh. Oh, 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 thanks, Polly. You know, that was mighty nice fainting. Uh, thank you, Blackie, but... I think I feel a real one coming on. Oh, you're wonderful. Do you want to be more wonderful? How? Call Faraday and tell him what you've heard. That will be enough to clear me. Of course I will. Oh. Oh. What's the matter, Blackie? Hold me. Hold me. I think I'm going to faint. Faint? A big, strong man like you? Well, it seems to be the only way I can get your arms around me. Austin Blackie will be back in just a moment with an interesting preview of next week's program. Now, uh, you've heard about the language of music, ladies. Do you know what this means? <whistles> That's right, Rinso White. And it means the cleanest, freshest, whitest wash you could ask to see. But you can't get clothes that clean with lazy, old-fashioned soaps. You need a hard-working, lively soap like Rinso. Because Rinso actually gets out more dirt. Why, Rinso just soaks clothes clean often in as little as ten minutes. And then a few quick finger rubs on extra dirty places, and there's your Rinso White Rinso Bright Wash. Yes, for a wash that you'll be really proud to hang up on your line, get Soapy Rich Rinso. And now, a brief glimpse of next week's adventure. Hello? Hello. Say, uh, I'm supposed to meet a young lady in your lobby there, and I've been delayed. Would, uh, would you... Mind having a page, please? Why, sure, sure. What's the young lady's name? Her name is Alice Manletter. Miss Manletter? That's right. Why, she left here just a minute ago. She met someone she was expecting and left with him. Well, that's impossible. Miss Manletter didn't know a soul in New York. Oh, I wouldn't know about that. But she told me she had an appointment with a Mr. Boston Blackie. And that's the man she left here with. Well, but that can't be possible. And why not? Because I'm Boston Blackie. <laughs> We'd like to take a moment here to congratulate the women of the United States Navy, the Waves, who are presently celebrating two years of service to their country. In two years, approximately 70,000 of America's finest young women have volunteered for the most important jobs of their lives, serving in the Navy. Waves work hard at important war tasks, but they keep their individuality, have plenty of fun and enjoyment with good companions, and have great pride and satisfaction for a job well done. If you'd like to help get this war over and bring your loved one home sooner, here's your chance. Join the waves. Be sure to listen at this same time next week for another exciting adventure with Boston Blackie. You can see Chester Morris as Boston Blackie on the screen at your favorite movie theater. Boston Blackie's latest Columbia picture is One Mysterious Night, soon to be released. Richard Lane appears as Inspector Faraday, music by Charles Connell. This is Harlow Wilcox saying good night for Boston Blackie, brought to you by the makers of Rinso, the soap that gets clothes. <laughs> Summertime means warm weather, and that means more perspiration. Use Life Boy in your daily bath or shower to protect yourself. You'll love its rich, purifying lather. Remember, too, that of seven leading brands, Life Boy gives you the most soap for your money. And besides, it's the only soap especially made to stop... This is the National Broadcasting Company.